schedule board meeting to order. First item, public comments to be heard of anything that is not on the agenda. Anybody? No? Excellent. Moving on. <coughs> Approval of the agenda. Any changes or deletions or anything? No. No? Make a motion to approve. I'll second it. The motion made and seconded to approve the agenda. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Carried. Consent calendar. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the consent calendar. Fair second. Yeah. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded to approve the consent calendar. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. So carried. Do business. Randolph Village Fire Department bylaws. The Village Fire Department has submitted to the town uh, its newly uh, member voted on uh, bylaws for the select board to consider. And uh, here in the packet. Oh, you know, yeah, 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 no, it's very well written. Anyway, so <laughs> um, we've had some conversations uh, with our town attorney about the bylaws. Um, our attorney uh, has asked that the board consider tabling the approval of the bylaws until he has had time to review our bylaw or these bylaws that have been submitted and also the bylaws that exist for Randolph Center and Randolph Village. Um, the reason being that he's hoping to be able to at some point review all three make recommendations that could potentially create a, uh, a set of bylaws that apply for all three fire departments. And based on uh, my comment to you earlier today, were you able to find out anything or about <coughs> their bylaws? I requested a copy of each one. Um, I do know that a um, portion, portion of the remaining two departments, so we do own and manage the East Randolph facility and everything else in it. We, there is a gray area with Randolph Center in that although we do fund everything and own for the most part everything and maintain everything, there are a few key items we don't own. So that would be a, con a potential contentious issue. Um, yeah, without saying more, we would be able to force changes for two bylaws but we wouldn't be able to force changes for all of them, but we would hope to get some buy-in from right now. Okay. Uh, but overall, our attorney says that having bylaws for individual individual departments, uh, he doesn't see a problem with, but does feel that they should all be uniform, um, and also feels that there should be references to the necessary mand mandatory policies like sexual harassment, um, or illegal harassment is what he's now calling it. Um, but also make a separation between firefighters when they respond to a fire scene, be clear that they are under the town personnel policy, but when they're not at a fire scene, that this governs firefighters while not at a fire scene. So they're two separate structures. Essentially, this would be okay, okay if they're essentially governing membership of the fire department, the fire personnel, uh, code of conduct while at the station, uh, rules that they would have to follow while at the station or procedures that they would have to follow to move up the ranks. But if they respond to a fire scene, that they are town employees during the hours that they're claiming for payment. But I think there's gonna be a huge overlap that you're not gonna be able to cover because like chain of command and all those other responsibilities that are spelled out here now that never were before yeah. have nothing to do with any sort of town policy or, or overlap there. Yeah. So you can't say this is just for the firehouse. It doesn't, right. it doesn't, you know, there's no there's no separation there. Right. So you're gonna have to we're gonna have to find a better way to integrate whatever that personnel policy is with, with the town hall. Correct. Uh, the suggestion would be to add an addendum to the personnel policy specifically for firefighters. So if it was personnel policy applies to everyone, and then we could add an addendum to just volunteer firefighter force to say when they respond. But to your point, correct. It is a, it's a gray area whether they're at a fire scene or whether they're on their way home or whether they're on their way to, whether they're at a business meeting, whether they're training. Um, there are a lot of gray areas that we would have to make less gray. Uh, but in order, to, in order to be able to make sure that the town and the bylaws are kind of in sync, the idea would be 
Um, first step would be to try to get a uniformity with all the bylaws for all the, all the fire departments. And then the next step would be to add an addendum to our existing personnel policy to say, yes, this is a personnel policy for all town employees, but for, for firefighters, this is the, the what applies and when. And we could we could spell that out working with the departments individually, or as a whole. So full disclosure, Matt and I basically wrote these, so do you guys have any questions? <laughs> Well written. <laughs> no, I don't have any questions at this time. <clears throat> it was initiated because we had uh, outdated bylaws. I mean, like 20, 25 mm -hmm. years old was the last time they were updated. Right. Still and referred to the town that was whatever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> to what to design it? Yeah. <laughs> um, and so we felt the need to update them to uh, manage our membership better. Uh, guys were unclear of their rules and what they were qualified for, and they did not really decide to update the document. And because we are, uh, to my understanding, the only town owns fire department, we have to get ours approved, our bylaws approved by the fiscal, whereas the others are a fire district and a prudential district. Mm -hmm. So while we own, the town buys the, the equipment and things for that for the other departments, they're technically, managed, to my understanding, managed by their districts. So they don't have to get approved by this board. So that's the gray area that we were talking about. We're actually, gray area coverage. The other is whether or not we can amend their bylaws for them, us being the board. That's what you're trying to figure out. That's what we're going to have to figure out. Yeah. That's why he's asking the table, plus the overlap between yeah, the no, I'm, policies. Yeah, no, I'm on the table, policies. and I think I think we should have a conversation. And, and you know, has it, have, have the other two departments seen this yet? No, I talked to him about it, but because we've always been separate, yeah, I didn't give him a copy. Okay, but that's the intent is to share this with them and see if we can get well, them on the same page or not. Now that this is fully updated, I think this would be that's an excellent template for town-wide yeah. uniform highlights. Um, we'd have to work with the other fire departments and their chiefs and say, listen, this is updated. Theirs are probably not updated, um, and then also potentially speak with them and say. State law says that if the town purchases all the equipment and maintains the budget and everything else, for all intents and purposes, they are a town fire department. Um, I, yes, the case could be made locally to say no, 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 we're not, but you know, we, we pay the bills. And if we pay the bills, we are. Um, and if the town were to say, you know, work with us to limit the risk to the town, and you know, I'm not saying that this would happen, but if a, a district were to do something that wasn't in conformity with the safety or anything else, the town could just say we're taking back all of our equipment. You know, now you have a building. Yeah. Uh, not that it would ever get to that point, but no. there's an argument can be made on the town town wide basis that they are a town department, but it is like to Mike's point, very gray because we've never had this conversation. So if you were gonna <coughs> share this, or would you just have a conversation with the chiefs first and start there, or would you? Uh, we have committees or? Well, if it ends up being a committee, then it'll be a fire advisory. Yeah, well, that's what I was just wondering. Do you go to fire advisory to this or do you start with the chiefs? Well, I think we're going to have to start with our attorney and see if we well, can actually modify. Start with the attorney, but, but if, if that, because it sounds like this makes sense that, that, you know, if it's our equipment pool here, that it seems like they all should be on the same similar page, let's put it that way. There may be some things they want to tweak, but I just, from my perspective, I feel like I feel like tabling it would be my recommendation to the board, with the caveat that what was created in these bylaws is an excellent template. I mean, if you know, if we could add something that our attorney feels would be appropriate um, for a townwide basis, we could absolutely use this as a template for the entire town because yeah. this is updated. And yeah, I, I I would say table it and have those conversations with the attorney, and then either. Fire advisory, or maybe just start with the chiefs, whatever you guys think is the best way to go. Probably a quick conversation with the chiefs and, and see what uh, <coughs> the level of participation they'll provide yeah. Yeah. after we hear from the attorney. That is, yeah, okay. That's what I would think. So, based on the, the 99 scoping study and the update of that, that we'll end up proposing later on. I can see this taking a couple of years to do that. 
just throwing that out there. Well, the, there's a lot of stuff in here that's particular to our department, right? I mean, what officers we have. We don't have lieutenants, others do. Yeah. Um, when the voting is, how they vote, whether it's voice or payment, there's a lot of stuff in there that's, you know, I don't see that being common across the departments. So that's no, where it's going to get more challenging. But there is information there, right? That <clears throat> could be shared across yeah. the departments. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So um, they may want yeah, to structure their training structure requirements are different. Right, exactly. It's either an opportunity to say, hey, everybody has to have at least this, yeah. or, yeah. you know, it's going to be a bunch of disparate documents that have to be referenced together, I think. It's a, good, it's a good template to start with. And if yeah. they, to, yeah, they both want to do something a little different, that's probably, you know, stars, you know, officers and things like that. There's certain things that are, you know, probably priority to the Randolph Department, but not necessarily applicable to the Randolph Center. Yeah. Standard. So I would say, yeah, have the, I'd recommend talk to the attorney, have a conversation with the chiefs, and see what kind of feedback you get. All right. So, Larry, any thoughts? No, that sounds good. Um, we're obviously no rush to adopt this. Not that we should put it off forever, but it so, uh, hasn't been updated in so many years. Another month or two isn't going to. So the rush is that we're operating off of the old bylaws, So which leaves a bigger gray area of town employees versus fire department employees, et cetera. Mm -hmm. but, but it's been like that for decades? Yeah. Okay. Just, yeah, that's, <laughs> just makes sense. sense. That's the, that's the kind of urgency of getting it updated soon. And there's been about 10, 11 months worth of effort into this one being updated now. Again, I mean, to your point, it's taken a while, right? It's because you tried to be thorough. No, no. I mean, that's true. But, but, but there's definitely um, a, well done. There's a lot definitely a, um, understand for more information. All right, so we'll table it and uh, Wait till we hear from Adolfo and mm -hmm. bring it forward. Great. Now you got to keep coming to board meetings for a while. We'll try to put you in the front of you down there. Yeah. There you go. Oh, it's all business now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, special event permit. Uh, we received a request to um, uh, issue a special event permit to Upper Bass, Upper Bass Beer Company to sell spirited beverages at the this weekend's winter festival. Um, this is just the ratification. Okay. No new questions from the emails that we approved. All right. Is there a motion to approve ratify? So moved. Okay. Second. Motion is made and seconded to ratify the application of a special event permit for Upper Pass Beer Company. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? I'm abstaining. Abstaining? Yeah. Okay. Three zero one. Wait, I'm sorry, I missed your two motions. There was a motion to approve the special events permit. Okay. It was approved three zero one with Perry of That was Matt and Larry. Yep. Okay. Renewal of liquor licenses. The town has received four uh, renewal requests. Uh, the first is for M&M &M Beverages, The Village. The second is for Floyd's General Store in the Randolph Center. Uh, Middle Branch Market and Deli in East Randolph. And the Dexo um, operating out of Vermont Technical College. And um, Shaw's, what looks like? And... Looks like you got two-sided. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Oh, there he is. Sorry. Sorry, I got West Coast yeah. Shaw's. Just, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Champlain Farms as well. Yeah. Summit. Yeah. 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 So no, com no complaints about these businesses. No complaints from these businesses. I'll move to approve the liquor licenses for those eight. And second. All right. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Abstain. So okay. Four zero zero. Revised fee schedule for the water and wastewater department. Uh. The Water and Wastewater Staff and Committee have proposed changes to several items uh, that they currently charge for services. Um, several of those items include inspecting lines that lead into private property. Uh, some include private uh, or privately requested meter readings uh, for, for folks that are interested in selling property or purchasing property. Um, most of these uh, price increases are being asked because rates have increased um, in general. And many of these fee schedules have not been amended in many years. Um, the highlighted or the highlight items 
On the second page are the changes that are being proposed uh, by, by staff. Some of those streamlining things, making the, some of the fees simpler. Exactly. Um, we did recently purchase, one of, the, one of the recent additions is the purchase of a new sewer camera. Uh, the department realized that uh, it could potentially increase revenues uh, by inspecting sewer lines, uh, offering that service to residents who wished to have that performed outside of the normal scope of service. Uh, it is a service that is charged by private companies, so we would essentially be uh, offering that service at a discounted rate and insurance to both in the town. Uh, that is really the only new addition that's being added to the, the fee schedule. 10% markup on material is pretty high. It's over 2x what government standard is. I, I, I haven't confirmed with staff as to how they reached their conclusions or how the water wastewater committee reached conclusions. Uh, it should be 4%. It's less than what we do with the contractors. The material? Yeah. It can be as high as 20. Not including their fee. Right. It's ridiculous. You wouldn't be approved for a government contract? <laughs> no, no, no. The, per the projects we bid out, the contractor's profit is more than. More than Profit's more. different than market on material. Mm -hmm. This is right. a this is a for this is a fee for handling, holding, or or shipping. Yeah. Right. Proposing to go up to twenty percent. No, he's saying less. <laughs> I'm just saying what was, it, what was it before? Uh, I think it was twenty-five dollars. A markup? In terms of twenty-five. No, 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 no. We had. Uh, I don't know the exact the, the current rate. I think it was ten percent. I don't think that's changed. That hasn't changed. Yeah. I mean, this should cost better if I remember right. Ten percent markup. So just so I understand, so if if the town gets called and they have pipe X on their on their truck, they're going to charge that. Plus ten percent plus what? Is it just a flat ten percent yeah. on top of the cost? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But that's for from the curb stop to the residence. To the residence. Yeah. yeah. That's basically private property. Not basically this. Yeah, right. It is. Yeah, right. So how long does it take to re do a meter reading? Not very long. I mean they could really go in there. 20, 30 minutes, depending on where the meter is. Um, we do have a device, if it's working properly, you can go in there, take a buzz, come back out. But it's also a matter of traveling to the property and then traveling yeah, back. So, so 20, 30 minutes is roughly travel. about three yeah. minutes now. I'm just two, thinking an hour. 225 bucks an hour is... That's for the... That's for non-working hours. That's for the non-working hours. Mm -hmm. I, so I understand. Yeah, well, that would be encouraging you to get it read during working hours, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's that's the that's the intention there. It's okay. really get people. It's a deterrent. All right. The, I understand the, that. The, no, I'm fine with my, my understanding uh, in the course of our conversation in the committee was that the requested media readings are um, almost always because there's been some sort of real estate transaction, and they need uh, a number for per rating. Yeah. And so so the thought from the water sewer people are like, you guys know this is happening. Like, you should just make sure it occurs during business hours. Okay. Um, there's, there's pretty substantial costs in the comp to call people in um, on a weekend or an evening to, to do this. Is that why the uh, hour minimum is one during normal hours and three outside of working yeah. hours? Yeah. They're all bargaining unit numbers, and so they're minimum requirements for coming in. So if a problem on the camera inspection, if a problem is found in the homeowners, there's no fee either for using the camera? So new camera inspection charge. So it says, hey, if it's pro found in a portion line that is a town sponsor's charge, will not be applied, but it doesn't say. Am I missing what the charge is? I'm looking here, I'm sorry, new camera inspection charge. So it says that if it's found, that it's is a line, town's responsibility, there's no fee. Right, but if it's found in the homeowners, there is a fee. For using the camera or for the call? Yes. 
Where's the fee for the camera? What's that cost? It's on the other side. It's uh, hundred dollars. Hundred dollars. Oh, okay. Sorry. Let's see. Any questions or comments from the public? Let's play to the board with the rates. <coughs> Make a motion to use the new rates. Effective when Adolfo. Uh just if, if the board would just approve it, then we could just as soon as we implement them uh, with staff. Do you want to time I mean like March first or something or it just as of t as of tomorrow? Okay. Is that your motion? Yep. Prove the rates effective Prove the rates. tomorrow. Yep. Prove your rates effective tomorrow. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. Motion is made to approve the rates effective tomorrow, February 15th. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So carried. Thank you. Great. The town would like to apply for a um, highway transportation grant for V-trains. The grant is available, um, it, it has a variety of uses, but what, what we would use it for is a class two road. Uh, we have learned that we are very high in the grant priority list because we have not applied for a grant for class two roads a number of years. So if we were to apply, we would like to receive it. Uh, the project that we have in mind is repairing Wendover Road off of uh, Route 66. It is in need of major repair. We have sufficient funds and we budgeted in our capital budget to meet the 20% match requirement. Uh, and if the board were to approve us applying for this grant, we would apply for the grant and use the 20% that we have secured in the capital reserve budget. Uh, we don't have a full estimate on this particular road because we're still working with uh, contractors so they can provide us with an estimate. The length of Windover Road is not as it's not as long as Furnace Street, which is a road we recently performed work uh, in Randolph Center. That project cost us $120,000. Well, the project itself was $120,000. We received a uh, major grant from the state, so we really only paid $1,200 for that project. This one here, we would probably only pay 20%, you know, roughly about $10,000, $20,000, depending on the cost of the project. And you're looking for approval to apply for the grant? Approval to apply for the grant. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve, approve Adolfo to apply for the grant. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? So carried. Old business? Doesn't look like there's any? None. Okay. Other business? Okay. We have a before we go into the manager's report and executive session, um, there's some public here. Anything you guys were looking to talk about tonight? No? Just being a part of the process? Awesome. Right on. Julie's here to help yeah. turn the manager's report. Okay, all right. Well, I just want to get the public comments out and, and, uh, before we get to there. Yeah. I know you like to ramble. <laughs> I can <laughs> I got another business performance review. <laughs> 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 uh, all right, so manager's report. Uh, we'll start with um, uh, what Julie's here to, to, to help present uh, or co-present. Um, uh, Julie and uh, Randolph Area Community Development Corporation, uh, members of her board and representatives from the select board at a meeting for the last uh, three, four months. We're working on strategies to how to continue to work together for the downtown designation program. Uh, at our last meeting, we felt that we had reached uh, an agreement for how the, the two bodies can essentially continue to work together. Um, some of those strategies included um, uh, working together, meeting together on a regular basis to uh, work out uh, strategies for applying for grants that are available for the downtown designation program. Uh, also ways so that we can maximize uh, potential required mandatory reporting so that the town has some input on what is being sought in terms of information and we could collaborate a little bit more. Um, the, I felt and I believe our, our board member representatives felt that the meetings were very productive. Julie I think also felt the meetings were productive. We had also representative from uh, the state uh, agency that manages the downtown designation program. Uh, they have been very encouraged by the progress that we've made. So we feel that 
they've made enough progress to be able to, to essentially build a very positive relationship going forward. Uh, so unless there were any objections, the, the goal going forward is essentially to start releasing funds that are uh, earmarked for the downtown designation program. Um, and also, uh, one of the reasons why uh, I asked Julie and Julie volunteered to be here tonight was so that we could talk about the grant that the board apply, uh, authorized town to apply for last week, which is a downtown designation transportation grant. Uh, we feel that we have a, a project that would be great. It's a multi-phase project that includes putting in new sidewalks on Pleasant Street. Um, I have some materials to share with everyone. Am I passing the ball? Um, Julie and I can add a little bit more about that, but I'll, I'll give a general brief and an introduction to the materials that you're going to be that you're reviewing. Is there footage? Okay. Um, so what you're looking at here is the intersection of Merchant Row and Pleasant Street. It's a very, uh, very preliminary design of what we're looking to do at that intersection. Uh, right now, there appears to be a lot of wasted space. It's a very movial shaped intersection. It just bronze out. Um, Julie and I, Bill Morgan, our highway superintendent, and our town engineer, Marty, walked through that intersection and came up with a potential idea to uh, reduce how wide the road becomes when it meets Pleasant Street, which would allow businesses in the area to expand their potential outdoor seating a little bit more. Um, on one end, there is already a, a little grass area that if, if we close the road a little bit more, it would increase the, the seating area. We could add some green stormwater mitigation, which there is funding available specifically for this type of funding. And we have some images of um, on the second page of the intersection itself, so that you can see exactly what the intersection looks like with the stop sign pole right in the middle of the road. That's one of the things that we're hoping to correct. Do you want to add something? I uh, just were, uh, I think one of the benefits of what Adolfo mentioned in terms of meeting regularly is that we can get ahead of these grants, so plan in advance, because these tend to be planning intensive projects. But this one seems like it's it's doable in the amount of time we have, and um, we're not sure we're eligible for the uh, clean water stuff, but we can put it, we can do our best to, to add those components and get in that funding as well. And um, the nice thing about this is that, you know, it takes a really not very attractive uh, area along that road, the back side of the main street, and tries to not only make it more functional, but make it more attractive. And as we've got businesses coming in across the street, you know, trying to encourage more businesses, the new center for uh, Rasta nearby, um, it's, I think, due for some attention. So Julie doesn't, uh, Julie didn't share this with you, but what these are just images of Pleasant Street. Uh, the image at the very top shows the portion of Pleasant Street that has a sidewalk end right behind Ken's Barbershop and has nothing but gravel through that section of building that we walked. Mm -hmm. The second image is the intersection of Merchant Trail and Pleasant Street, where the sidewalk essentially ends right at that intersection. And the last image at the bottom of the page is the intersection itself of Merchant Row and Pleasant Street. Um, so the idea would be to extend the sidewalk through the businesses behind Main Street. So where these end on Pleasant Street all the way through where it becomes dedicated parking which would increase pedestrian access for people walking in and out of those businesses through those entrances. On Merchants Row and Pleasant Street, uh, if we added additional more sidewalk behind the residents that exist there, it would be easier for our elderly who live in the red line and to be able to walk out and access that crosswalk. And the intersection itself, because it widened so unexpectedly at the very end, we lose a lot of space and there's also the potential for that stop sign that's in the middle of the road to constantly be hit and knocked down over and over and over again. So we want to be able to make as much use of the space as possible and we understand that we have businesses that are opening up there that may want some outdoor seating. We could essentially welcome them out when winter's over. Um, we are still working on pulling together the plan. Um, once we have the plan together, we'll definitely bring it back to the select board so they can decide whether or not 
they like the redesign of Birch and Trail and Pleasant Street, and if they feel that it's not what is necessary for the, for the neighborhood, then we could potentially just move forward with the sidewalks themselves and make it more easy for, for pedestrians to walk behind the businesses on Pleasant Street. That's phase one, our potential phase one. Next year, Julie and I have already committed to continue to work together so that next year we make improvements to Prince Street. Uh, right now we have a business that's gonna be opening up on Prince Street. We wanna make sure that their business is going to flourish. So the idea would be to potentially, if necessary, redesign the parking area in there, make it more pedestrian friendly, make it so that people can walk down to the bowling alley because there, there's a lot of traffic that, that you know, makes its way down there. And the road itself is, is in need of some considerable work. So that would essentially be phase two for next year. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. I like this project. Yeah, I really like the idea of reconfiguring the merchant center. Yeah. That's really brilliant. Yeah. That's something that Julie and I just we've been talking about and as soon as we were able to come to the agreement on the downtown designation program, this thing was just easy to just come out of both of our heads. Yeah. That's a that's a good project. Yeah. You know? You know, that would really make that space feel a lot better for yeah. investors. Clean it up, clean it up, sidewalk on the back. Yeah. I think it will actually make it safer, too. Yeah. To define the road better. Access yeah. to the new parking garage? Yeah, okay. <laughs> exactly. That could be the third project. That's right, that's the next one. <laughs> it, it, there is a 50% match with this grant that's available to us through the Data Designation Program. But we do have money available or put aside for some sidewalk work, so any grant that comes to us is going to help us financially. So. Excellent. I know this is just a conceptual drawing, but considering, I mean, are you considering putting all the space on one side or the other? Uh, we hadn't talked about that. The idea was, you know, maybe the, the first thought was to keep it as wide as it was and then put a, a planter, you know, that, a little island so people can walk through and make a big flower pot and maybe the stop sign of the planter. Then that morphed to reducing the sidewalk yeah. width or the, the road width. I think, you know, and Marty caught this, I think, you know, pretty well understands, but after we did that walk, when I drove down Merchants, the way it's set up now, it if you look at the way it opens up, it sort of, it defines its own way that pretty much that it would go because it's already, you know, there's already a little on each side that bulbs back, you know, in that delta-like formation that Adolfo was talking about. So if you continue that road and you'll have the proper clearances for the turns, the circumferences, but it pretty much, I think, is going to define itself when an engineer gets out there um, because the roadway is, 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 is already t determined. It's just at the end, for some reason, there was this big sort of like very odd kind of shaped, you yeah. uh, it was a two-way street. Yeah. Years ago, yeah. that was a two-way street. But it couldn't have had parking on both sides when it was no. a two-way street. So, yeah. so there, it, I think if you, I don't know if there's any of you driving down the street, but when you drive down the street, you can see sort of where it has to go. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's pretty obvious. I think well, I don't know. I mean, it could come out easily and come to you know come to a ninety on. Yeah, it could come on, on to a ninety on Pleasant. And, and I'm just thinking that you know there's. There's not a lot of restaurants that have a lot of sidewalk room for right. for sitting out, and if if it was expanded on one side, whoever goes into Ashley's or whatever real side or whatever it is, mm -hmm. be nice and out, nice outside seating. Yeah, that would give them more extra space. If we yeah. gave, but if you only give them this little butt out, you know, there it may not be enough to put seating there. That's all I was asking. Sure. If we gain, good. if we gain proper or we gain sidewalk or lawn space, mm -hmm. is it going to be on one side or the other or both? But you mentioned the possibility too, of like in Montpelier and other places they've been experimenting with these, you know, take a parking space or two and make it more community space and you could sort of play with that in the design and see if it could help at that very end to make that more useful area. Yeah. Essentially we'll there, the parking garage. Like the temporary deck so sure, could you be put in a parking spot. You say this Essentially it's like a continuous from the sidewalk through the one parking spot. It's all outdoor seating, little bench area. Mm -hmm. Those are things that are out there yeah. and 
That's probably the concern you're going to get from local businesses is there's not enough parking already. Yeah. yeah. And so Especially if you take two or three, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that might be the only pushback you get. But otherwise, I agree. I think it's a pretty good project. I think it's yeah. I think it'd be really beneficial for that corner back the street. Yeah. David will love it. To give him some more David stuff. Will love David's going to love this. And I'm sorry, the sidewalk is going to go to like federated stop through that where the like 18 wheelers back in there this morning and then start again right behind the bank where they park. Or? Yeah, so the there is a street pole, it's a, a utility pole. Two, yeah. yeah, so the sidewalk would essentially go to that point there and end. Um, and then after a well, while, slightly before that, because there is a catch basin on the ground there that uh, we want to make sure that it stays ADA compliant five, five foot wide. And if we build it all the way to that pole, we may have to move the, the catch basin, so we're trying not to make it too much of a big project. Uh, so we may end before that utilities pole, and everything beyond that would remain driveway. So the residents in that area or the businesses can still continue to use their loading docks in the driveways. So I'm sorry, so, so from merchants to that pole, or are you talking from Ken's to the pole? From, oh, uh, I'm looking at the yeah, okay, from middle of my GF, from Merchant Row, through the first utility pole, or just before it, right yeah. to the main. Okay, so and then from could, Ken's, would you go up as well? With the from Ken's, we would go to where essentially the first utility pole is. We had talked potentially going through Bar Harbor's initial area, right. and then they, there. yeah, then they, there is a section where it becomes head-in parking. So we could either go all the way to that point, or just before that. There was a um, depends on the grade, it, you know, so it was unclear. Out there with all the ice and stuff, whether the grade was too much. And then there's also, we notice a, a natural crossing the road area from the new coffee shop to the west side of Pleasant Street. So mm -hmm. yeah. we, would, we would end essentially that natural crossing areas. A popular traffic calming practice is narrow lanes. So if you narrowed the lanes, put the curb in there, put a transversible curb on it so the businesses could still park. They would just park on the other side of where your sidewalk is and you narrow the curb, the lanes down by a couple feet. Mm -hmm. So it would go to 10 instead of 11 or 12 foot curb uh, lanes. Mm -hmm. Just something to consider when you get to that point. Okay. Road lanes, I'm sorry, you're parking. Road lanes. Yeah. You know, if they're going to park right? behind there and you put the sidewalk out in front of the utility poles, you make your lanes from 12 foot wide down to 10, there's your four foot, almost your entire width for your ADA. Yeah. Got a lot of truck traffic on that street. I you wonder. Do. Just sharing that. A lot of well, when I first looked at this one, that was my concern. I wasn't sure which, inter which road they were going. That, that's not so much there, but going down, making the if you narrowed the lanes going down Pleasant, that might be a little bit of a struggle because it's already hard enough to get around the corner at the bottom. Well, the federated guy had a problem. Took them a while to park this morning and stuff for a Yeah, no, it's, there's a, I mean, yeah, between you get deliveries to Federated, you're probably going to have deliveries going to the old Bell Lane's place. You're going to, you know, there's a yeah. fairly significant like, truck traffic down that road. We also did notice when we were there that trucks coming down Merchant Row were making such a sharp, because it, it opens up when it meets Pleasant Street, they were making such a sharp turn to the left uh, to head toward, you know, the, the point on, back to, on main, back to Main Street area. They were curving so far to the left that as they made that left turn, they were traveling on the opposite side traffic lane for a few feet. So if somebody wasn't paying attention, they right. could potentially go head on. So but if you were to back that up and put a 90 there, it would take care of that. That would, central problem. that would fix that. Yeah. So, so that's that was that project, and you know, just also to share with the board that we're still working very well with RACDC on downtown designation. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Julie. Thank you. Just to run home quickly, I promise. Uh, uh, first item other than that is that the governor is planning a visit to Randolph on February 26th. Uh, the governor is building a schedule as we speak, and we're hoping to have board members potentially volunteer to attend several events as they become public and available to us so that we could continue to encourage the governor to thank you Julie continue to encourage the governor to, to continue helping us here in our growth um, so just wanted to plant the bug in everyone's ear if you're available on that day and are willing to attend these events please let me know 26 yeah, 26 yeah. 
can help you. Sorry. Is there any other? Is there any, just anything in particular which is drawing you here on that particular day, or? I think that's the governor's, the administration's um, capital in capital day. Capital, 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 capital day. So they've done. So right now he's done these trips to all the. He's going to all the counties, and so it's. He takes the entire administrative staff, and they're traveling to these counties to do different things, look at different projects. Um, I went to the one in Windsor. I was invited down to that one. And one, of the, one of the events down there was to talk about broadband and cellular service. So he's, they just pick topics, and then they set up meeting times and pull people in the community to chat about things, feedback. Um, I know that, I'm, unfortunately, I'm not going to be here, but I do know that there was some conversations about and stopping potentially the LED. Um, he was going to go to Limois in the morning for breakfast, mm -hmm. um, Orange County type thing. So he's floating around the county. Yeah. But the and He'll what be I here. heard, pardon? He'll he's going to end up here. Is what I was under the impression. He'll be here. Eleven Yeah. So, so that's kind of what's going on. So there's a bunch of stops he's making. So if you're available on that day, please let me know. Um, the next item is a conversation that has been ongoing with the board and that's revolving around the our continued relationship with White River Valley Ambulance. Uh, I've had an ongoing conversation with my counterpart in the town of Northfield. Um, he and I had a conversation today that was very promising. He shared with his select board and with his ambulance uh, director the um, possibility of providing service to the town of Randolph. Um, the reason why they're willing to offer is, you know, he and I have a good relationship and we also understand that our per capita rate is twice what theirs is. Um, so the conversation now is at a point where we may be able to establish uh, some form of an agreement. It's very preliminary. There are no hard amounts yet, but uh, potentially have a new ambulance that they would be purchasing stationed in Randolph and our costs would potentially decrease. Um, there is no, again, no exact amount yet, but the idea is that it would provide better response times because the ambulance would be in town, and then also a lower cost. So, 24 hours, seven day a week service kind of thing? It would be 24 hours, seven day a week service. There would be the challenge in that we don't have overnight services uh, available in town. Um, I would like to purchase Murphy beds and put them in offices and make use of the gurneys inside the ambulance, but. That wouldn't fly. <laughs> um, so I, I, what we could potentially go back to Northfield to say, well, the ambulance would be here through the day hours and then the evening hours they would respond from Northfield. Um, it's a bit of a challenge to get from where they are to us, but given some of the response times that we have to Randolph Center and East Randolph, it wouldn't be any worse than those response times for the most part. We'd be traveling down the highway. They're 10 minutes from the interstate where their bays are. Yeah. So there would be some special considerations that we would have to deal with. We gain response time to the eastern side of town, but you lose response time to the western side of town if they're coming from north. Potentially, they're coming from north. Yeah. yeah. I, think, um, I think if this was considered, it'd have to be figured out for staff in here. Yeah. 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 Staff. Yeah. With the the savings that we are identifying on an annual basis. Um, we could potentially build a second story on Randall Village Fire Station very quickly. Um, again, we don't have any amounts, but loosely anywhere from fifty to one hundred thousand dollars a year, I would say. And adding a new story, uh, I don't know what that amount would be, but uh, we had a price that was under two hundred fifty thousand. So it would pay itself back within a few years. So it would be worthwhile investment. But again, it's all very preliminary. Um, Northfield is on board with continuing their investigation to give us exact amounts. We're on board to continue having the conversation with them while also continuing the conversation with the world so that they at the very least know that we're exploring options and they do know that we're exploring options. So the Northfield Ambulance Service is a town paid ambulance service? Yeah. In Norwich, I think. Yeah. Norwich is a big New York University. Yeah. 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 Their per capita rate is at 35, roughly 30 to 35 dollars, and ours is at 63. And we have been informed that it will, will go up this fiscal year. So wow, that's quite a discrepancy. Yeah. That's where we are with that issue. Um, Bell Main Space, it's still 
um, uh, hot topic uh, in a good way. There has been a lot of activity recently. We have our partners with Piedmont Economic meeting with a potential occupant, um, and that's going very well. Uh, we want to make sure that the occupant uh, releases their information as soon as they're ready to release. We're also currently ironing out potential details with grant funding that may be available um, or what the needs are of the potential occupant, but for the most part it's looking very promising and uh, looks like it'll be very good for the town. Uh, should have more to share soon. And lastly, we had a conversation um, at uh, this past week's Fire Advisory Committee. The conversation revolved around being able to uh, potentially fund a new study that would investigate the needs of the town, investigate the capabilities of our existing apparatus, um, essentially fund a study that could, if possible, mainstream our operation or tell us whether we need more equipment or more, more of what we may not have. Um, our fire chiefs have agreed to meet. They have agreed to start working on a potential scope for an assessment. Um, and they hope to, whatever they create, to then bring it back to the select board so that the select board can review it with the, with the goal of being able to assess our needs, assess what we currently have, and determine whether or not what we have is enough, too much, or if we need more of it. So that's what happened this past week. When did that, when did that happen? Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, fire Just checking. I had week. a phone call, so I was hoping that that did. Phone call was <laughs> after that. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, and that, uh, that is all I have for tonight. Okay. So we are at the uh, all exciting part of the executive session. Okay. Make a motion to go into executive session. Second. Motion was made and seconded to enter executive session with who joining us? Mm -hmm. Just you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Yes, sir.